Greetings programs, welcome to part two of Astro Train Day. So, as promised in uh, part one, we're looking at the Earthrise Astro Train. And um, for anyone wondering, it's completely identical to the Siege release. It's, it's literally the same figure, just re-released, since this is an Earth mode figure, not a Cybertronian mode figure. Um, really quick, before we get into this guy, there is actually a lot to cover with his little tinder box. So, as you can see, there's three pegs right here. Those will just peg into the back of the train mode right there. You know, there you go, he's got the tinder box. Or, go ahead and open this thing up. And this is his weapon storage. So, he actually has five guns hiding in here if I can get a hold of them to actually pop them out Ugh. and if anyone didn't watch the first part of this there's a reason that I said I was not going to cover everything you can do with his guns because when you've got you know, five pieces to weaponry, you know, build your own thing, there's a crap load you can do. So, all I'm going to cover here is what I think is the best one, whereas you can actually get all five of these guns to peg together into one giant, I don't want to be bothered with aiming today gun. <laughs> And right there. So, um, this is my preferred thing to do with the guns. Clearly, there's a million other things you can do with it. Have fun. Figure things out. You know, the directions show you a couple things. There's a lot more you can do. So, there's the gun. As for the tinderbox itself, obviously you can fold it back up. Um, there's little tabs and... Uh, tab slots all over this thing that just line them all up to get it back into the box mode. So, there's the main tinder box mode. You can also fold everything out flat and then fold this piece down. And I believe this is how you do the uh, like the launch pad mode for the uh, shuttle. You can also spin this piece to get it oriented however you want. Or you can fold these flat like that, or fold them forward. And I know that this is also used for the shuttle. It's kind of like a landing skid or something. There's just a lot of different things you can do with this. For sake of this video not being a million years long, I'm just going to pull these parts off, which I might have to do off camera just for leverage. Yep, doing it off camera for leverage. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's just these two uh, spots right there slide up into those. And then these are held together with just two little uh, tabs at the front there. But... I'm going to do that, then fold it back up like it's going into uh, tinderbox mode, except I'm going to take this piece and rotate it around and fold it under instead. And this is, I don't really know of a name for this, but basically this is backpack mode. So eventually we're going to stick this on the back of the train, mo uh, the robot mode. And if you want, you can have a deluxe figure or something riding on his back or something. So, there's that if you want to do it. Again, there's a lot of things you can do with this. They're covered in the directions, and there's a lot you can come up with yourself. Um, the new, like, uh, base building um, clip system is on the front here, so you can do that. There's just all kinds of stuff to do with this. I'm trying to limit this video as much as I can <laughs> to just being on the main robot. So, 
now that we're finally talking about the main robot, five minutes into this stupid video, um, here he is. Once again, we are starting out in the train mode. It just so happens that is the easiest point to start at with both figures. Um, wonderful little uh, tampograph, that's the word, uh, Decepticon insignias on both sides there. Very, very purple mode, which I do like. Um, these wheels do spin, though the, you know, all the armature and everything out here, that is just for show. I don't know my steam engines, I can't tell you what it's called. <laughs> um, silver, I think that's supposed to be a light up there at the front. Um, I do appreciate all this, you know, piping and tubing being picked out in silver, you know, gunmetal paint. And, of course, big silver rocket boosters on the back. Because that's what every steam engine needs. Big silver rocket boosters. So, um, for this figure in particular, yeah, this shuttle mode is easily the better alt mode. It's just beautiful. I love the color. I love the molded detail. It actually rolls really, really well, really loudly. I know it rolls right at the bottom of the frame, but my camera is being a pain in the butt about uh, letting me use the tripod. I don't know what's going on. I need to um, adjust some of its tightnesses, I think. But anyway, now we're going to finally get down to transforming this into shuttle mode. And it's shockingly not as complicated as I thought it would be when I first saw this figure. Also, before I go too much farther in... Um, I do want to say massive thanks to my buddy Tim who hooked me up with this one. So if you guys like the videos coming out today, thank Tim and Jorge. They're the ones who got me these guys. Anyway, um, transforming this guy, really straightforward. I'm going to take these front wheels here, flip their panels up, and you'll see there's two holes right there. For now, we're going to use this one. And that will just line up, tab on there. Gonna come back here. Oh, and then we're going to actually take the whole entire front of this thing and split it. So you're gonna pull these panels out on their double hinges, which is very stiff. This is a very new figure. And then you're going to want to split the front of the engine as well. So, just get everything ripped in half like that. And then we're going to come back here, rotate these wheels around. Why is this one? There we go. Then you're going to start unfolding the wings. You do want to start down here. There's these little slots. They're going over these really long tabs. Just go ahead, start getting uh, the wings unfolded. Unpeg the rocket boosters from right there. I want to come up here, flip out these little side panels. There is a little hook right there you can get a hold of if you need to. Fold this up to hide the head. Fold this back, and then it'll take a little bit of doing, but you're going to just work this stuff, this section a little bit. The tail fin will slot ever so slightly between what's obviously going to be the forearms, and then these little hooks will go over the tops there. So just kind of get that all lined up. Give these a squeeze together, and then as you do, bring this back up, and tap the rocket booster back on, and then fold these side panels back down. So, now you've got all that done, uh, you're almost done, just come up here, fold the halves of the uh, smokestack and light up. Rotate these sections around to expose the shuttle cockpit. 
Close them back up. There's like a million pegs you have to line up inside of these two halves. And then just go ahead and push these pieces back up on their double hinge and get them to line up with each other and peg back in. And there you've got the shuttle mode. And there's a reason people have complained about this. I know there's even an upgrade kit coming out for it. This back half does look pretty rough, shall we say. And, you know, it doesn't bug me. I'm aware that this thing is, you know, it's a transformer. There's going to be kibbles and bits in different places. But this is still pretty egregious, you know? Like, from the side and stuff, it's okay. But from the top, it's just emptiness. I don't really know what they could have done. I feel like they might have been able to do something with, you know, instead of giving us the tinderbox, maybe have something that came up over on this. Maybe make the tinderbox be what comes up over this. I don't know. But overall, it's still not bad. He's still got, you know, a billion wheels down here on the bottom. So it can kind of roll back and forth a little. Um, it does have... The uh, the Siege scuff paint still going on, even though this is an Earthrise release. Um, little Decepticon symbols there on the wings. A, a million ports all over this thing, obviously, by the way. Because, like I said, it, there's a lot you can do with the weapons on this thing. So, yeah, there's many weapon ports on it. But, overall, still a pretty cool figure. You know, I, I do like this mode. So... Moving on from this, we're going to go ahead and get him into robot mode. So, first thing we're going to want to do is come back here, unpeg the boosters again, then you're actually going to bring them down on their double hinge, and they will peg in down there between the wings. Then actually you're going to bring the wings back as well on their double hinge. So, four hinges total I guess. Um, flip these little panels up, fold this down, or uh, the tail fin, fold that back in, peg these back down, bring down the arms, and uh, the way the arms work is pretty cool, they are tabbed into themselves, it's just going to go ahead, straighten them out, fold out the fist, it will lock into place, and then... This little uh, hook right here will tab over this edge of uh, that purple piece. So you might have to give it a really good shove, but... Come on. There we go. It will push in. Let's go ahead, rotate the arm around. Same thing over here. Straighten it out. Fold out the hand. Bring it down. Snap it in, and rotate. So, then you're going to come down here, and just like before, we're going to bring these panels out on their double hinge, split uh, the front of the whatever vehicle mode you're in, and then we're actually going to bring these down all the way this time, and they will lock into place. Then... You don't have to, but you're supposed to actually bring this little piece out, and it's on a rocker. So instead of pegging it back in right there, you're supposed to peg it in right there instead. And that'll just give everything a little bit more of a leg-like shape, brings up you know the top of his calf a little. It's very minor. But it's there if you want it. It does work, help with the uh, aesthetics a little bit. So I'm not going to complain too much. Come up here. Fold these pieces down. Form the front skirt, more or less. I think it's front skirt. I don't know. I don't know armor pieces. <laughs> um, and reach down under here. And uh foot has a little hole. It's pegging in right there. 
just going to bring this up and around and then there's a little hole right there that this piece will peg into same thing over here unpeg bring it around peg it in and finally just go ahead and finish bringing the wings down on their double hinge and Peg everything into his back. And there you have Earthrise slash Siege Astro Train in robot mode. And holy cow, is this guy awesome looking. Um, This is probably the best G1 style Astro Train I have ever seen. Like, this is even better than some of the third parties I've seen. And... No, it's not better than all third-party figures I've seen, but this guy's a $50 leader figure, not, you know, a $250 insanity thing. <laughs> so, major props, actually, for them getting this guy to work so well. Um, he does have a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow to break up the color scheme, just like I, you know, appreciate about the, uh, the Takara C, um, Titans Return Astro Train. Um, again, fantastic head sculpt. I really am just a fan of Astro Train's face at this point. I can't really explain it any better than that. Um, really quick, what you can do, um, these pieces that we pulled off the top of the tinderbox, these are meant to become basically just you know foot elevators, I guess. Um, interestingly enough, they do have little flip-out wheels. I don't know what their point is. As well as on this side, um, the wheel just flops. So on the other one, it at least holds. This one just flops. So, I don't know what's up with that, but go ahead, tab them on to his feet. Gives him just a little bit more height. And then, like I said, we're going to take this, turn that piece, and backpack mode, yay! Backpack mode does make uh, mine not stand very straight, so we'll see how long I leave him in backpack mode. Give him his gun, which I'm genuinely shocked he can hold up right, that thing is ridiculous um I gotta say this is another really great figure now to get to you know the elephant in the room because yes there's been a thing with a lot of the new leader class figures where you're basically just getting a Voyager class figure and some more stuff with shockwave in particular, I kind of see the issue people had because even with his extra stuff, Shockwave is still pretty small. Yes, this guy height wise isn't very big, but he's got, you know, a billion D7 weapons. He's got the box to hold them in. Yes, it's just these little feet pieces, but he's got this too. Like, when you've got this guy as a cohesive lump. You are very noticeably holding a lot of plastic. This guy is heavier than Overlord. This thing is just... This thing weighs a ton. It is solid. So, it definitely justifies that uh, leader class price point. So, for this guy in particular, yeah. um, he He's very much justifies being a Voyager figure with more stuff. Because he comes with a lot of stuff. Let's see if I can get the uh, backpack pulled off here. We'll actually get into the uh, posability. His head is on a ball joint. Get a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of up and down, full rotation. His head is very stiff on mine, so I don't like to mess with it a whole bunch just because it's hard to do. Um, shoulders can rotate all the way around. You can go out. Double jointed elbow, um, no wrist articulation. He does have a bicep swivel though. 
Um, he does have a waist rotation as well. You can move that little panel up and you can kick forward that far. Um, next to no kicking back though, just because this is basically always in the way. Um, he can do the full splits. He's got a rotation just underneath his uh, thigh. That is scary tight on mine. He does manage to still have just shy of 90 degrees at the knee, as well as he has an ankle tilt. Really good ankle tilt. And you can unpeg the foot and bend it down too if you want. So, yeah, overall, um, either of these figures you cannot go wrong. Personally, I lean this guy ever so slightly more, just because I do really love that steam locomotive mode. But they are both really great. So, next video, I'm actually just going to be going through and comparing them mode for mode. So, me, yes, my ultimate choice is both. But for anyone who only wants one or the other... Go ahead, watch that video, and decide for yourself which one you think is better overall. So, anyway, hope to see you guys there. If you don't, thank you for watching this at least. And I will see you next time.